Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. So today we'll be looking at the mesentery of the small and large intestine. We'll be looking at the mesentery of the small and large intestine. The mesentery generally is defined as a peritoneal fold that is attached to the posterior abdominal wall and it's helped in suspending the small and large intestine in the abdominal cavity. So the mesentery of the small intestine is known as the mesentery proper. So we'll first of all look at the mesentery proper, which is the mesentery of the small intestine before seeing other mesenteries. So this is the mesentery of the small intestine, which is the mesentery proper. The mesentery proper is defined as a twofold peritoneal layer that attaches the small intestine to the posterior abdominal wall and suspends the small intestine in the abdominal cavity. So you can see the mesentery proper. And the mesentery proper only suspends or it attaches only the jejunum and the idium, as the duodenum has no mesentery. The duodenum has no mesentery. So it is only the jejunum and the idium that it attaches. So let's look at the extent of the mesentery. The mesentery begins at the this flanger. So this is the fourth part of the duodenum. So you can see the duodenum has no mesentery. You can see that the duodenum has no mesentery. So it begins from the duodenogenal flasure. So this is the duodenogenal flasure. It begins from there and it runs obliquely. It runs in an oblique manner. So you can see the oblique orientation. It runs obliquely and and at the sacroiliac joints. So you can see this point. You can see this point. Eh? This is the sacroiliac joint. So it ends at the sacroiliac joint. So this is it. So this is where it ends. So the mesentery proper helps to attach the or suspend the small intestine to the posterior abdominal wall. So we will be looking at the contents of this mesentery. Generally, the mesentery helps to transmit uh, vessels, both blood vessels, lymphatic nerves, to the large and small intestine. So the mesentery proper contains fats. So you can see fats. If you look at the color of this peritoneum, it is yellowish because of the presence of fats. On a normal peritoneum, is not supposed to be this color and it's not supposed to be this thick. But it is very thick and yellowish because of the presence of fats. So the first content of the mesentery is fats. Then the second content is the vessels, both blood vessels, mesenteric vessels. It contains the mesenteric vessels, lymphatics, and nerves. So these are the contents of the mesentery. So I've already told us what the mesentery do. It helps to transmit blood vessels, lymphatic nerves, eh, to the small and large intestine. Then another thing that it does is that it helps to hold because without this mesentery, the small intestine will be moving from one place to another. Eh? It will move from one place to another in the abdominal cavity. But because of the presence of this mesentery, you can see any position the jejunum is, it remains there. Any position the idiom is, it remains there. No free movement. You get so that is the function of the mesentery and also 
in the large intestine, the mesentery also helps attach the large intestine to the posterior abdominal wall so as to make it to the main static and not move from one position to another. So that is the function of the mesentery. Then let's look at the border of the mesentery. Mesentery have two border. We have the attached the border and we have the free border. We have the attached the border and we have the free border. So let's look at the attached border. So you can see this is the attached border. You can see it is attached to the posterior abdominal wall. So this is the attached border of the mesentery. Attaching to the posterior abdominal wall. So you can see, let me show us this is the attached border of the mesentery. And the attached border is 15 cm. Eh? If you look at the length of the attached border, it is 15 cm long, starting from the duodenal flasia. So, starting from the duodenal flasia here, eh? the attached border runs obliquely to the sacroiliac joints. So if you measure the length, it is 15 cm in length. Then, this is the free border of the mesentery. You can see the free border of the mesentery. It is not attached. In as much as it is attached to the wall of the small intestine, but then it moves freely. But the attached border doesn't move. It remains one place. But this free border moves freely. The free border is around 5 meters in length, so it is very long. Then having seen that, this is the mesentery proper. So, if you look at this jejunum, because this is the jejunum, the mesentery in the jejunum, you see these vessels here. Eh? It's, it's known as the vasa recta. If you look at it, it's kind of branched. Eh? Is branched, and that is what is called the vasa recta. There are branches of the superior mesenteric artery. So there are branches of the superior mesenteric artery. Then the difference between the uh, vasa recta of the jejunum and the vasa recta of the idium is that the vasa recta of the jejunum is longer, while that of the idium is shorter. So that is the difference. Then let's look at the mesentery in the large intestine. Let's look at the mesentery in the large intestine. So, in as much as it is, it is not so visible. But if you look at this now, this is the right mesocolon. Eh? It is the mesentery of the ascending colon. It attaches the ascending colon to the posterior abdominal wall. So this is known as the right mesocolon. Then we have the transverse mesocolon. You can see this. This is the transverse mesocolon. I've told us before in the last video in the small and large intestine. It attaches the transverse colon to the posterior abdominal wall. So this is the transverse mesocolon. Then this is the left mesocolon. So you can see this, you can see the left mesocolon. You can see the left mesocolon. Eh? There are peritoneal folds that attach the descending colon to the posterior abdominal wall. Then you can also see the sigmoid mesocolon. Eh? The sigmoid mesocolon. It also attaches the sigmoid colon to the posterior abdominal wall. So this is the sigmoid mesocolon. So we've come to the end of this teaching. I will encourage us to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Chisholm Great. 
Like this video, share this video to your friends and comment on this video. Thank you very much.